a person who is very selfish, only interested in their own joy and lust and happiness. Today. That's why the marriage contract you have with your spouse, how can you bridge that trust? Understand? It's just because of that moment you succumb to that weakness of desire, loss, and trust. But have you ever thought of the consequence? When they come to know, there were many cases. There was a real one. Somebody I know in Singapore, <laughs> quite bad. <laughs> the husband was very handsome. Then he, he, to him, he has a different view of what life is. He said he wants to live life to the fullest. He wants to enjoy his life. So he tells the wife, you must understand me. You must connect to me. He did all this thing and yet he can justify what he do with the what He said, I am very fair. I don't want to cheat you, I don't want to deceive you. I upfront tell you <laughs> what he wanted to do. He said he got another girl who is interested in him and this girl is so other. So he has an affair. You know finally what happened? He contacted his venereal disease. Luckily it's not AIDS, I think, I think the Lord, God of the Lord, the Lord. Then, infected the Lord, see? And the one you conceived with a kid. What is going to happen? So now there is a lot of remorse. A lot of what they call bitterness between the two. The wife hate him so much. Initially it was full of love, joy. Just because of what? The lust, the desire, the salvation. Is it worth it? Just for those moments. It is up to the individual. Right? Your life, you decide how you want to do it. You don't believe this law, you go in. That's why the Buddha said, if you don't keep this precept, it is going to have a lot of repercussions. You reap what you sow. Whatever you do, the effect will come back to you. If you break this precept, it has its consequences. Dhammapada was one, will be the one. That's why he said, suffering will follow, like the wheel that follow the book. And this is very true. A person who violates this precept suffer a lot. So when you reach a point where you have to go through separation, like Divorce and all this. You know how bitter can it be? The hatred. From love, he become hatred. What type of love is that? <laughs> because of that. Because of the evil rules. Then, through that, not only the two suffer, the children suffer, the in laws suffer, the parents, the brothers, sisters, and all the friends that have affinity with them all suffer. Just because of one reason, one very small evil lust, desire, you create a so much negativity. You believe the human consciousness, the planetary consciousness, through all this negativity. And this is going to last for very long. Especially the divorce proceeding, you see the paper fighting for custody over the children and all. There are so many things when you really reflect and contemplate. If you know the consequence behind, you will never do it. You will never allow it to happen. That's why the teaching is very, very important. So now we move on to the fourth precept. What is the fourth precept? We undertake the training group to do what? Abstain from telling lies. Abstain from harsh speech. Abstain from saying bad things about people, bad bad things, slandering. Abstain from frivolous speech. What type of person do this? Huh? What type of person do this? You lie because of what? You want to cheat in it. Uh, that is greed in it, that is selfish in it. You got some agenda behind. You want to conceal 
something some advantage to yourself. That's why you lie. And the worst are the people who lie to their own loved ones. Understand? Why can't you just be sincere about the whole thing? Then together, resolve. Develop the understanding of the law, not to cheat, not to deceive. It's not wrong. When people come to find out, that breach of that trust can be very, very severe. And it can lead to a lot of pain. Especially between good friends. If your very good friend comes to the one day, you lie and actually deceive or not. What do you think will happen with that friendship? Huh? What will happen to that uh, friendship? If you have trusted somebody who has been so close to you, so friendly and so nice to you, where you can depend on him for anything you trusted him, but behind your back he did this to you. So this precept you cannot violate. Once you violate, it shows you have a lot of cunning and deceitfulness, cheap, selfishness. You are deluded and so on. So all those who violate the precept has all these evil roots of greed, hatred, and delusion. That's why the Buddha said the only way to find out whether what is evil or not evil is to change the evil root. That's why you must train your mind to develop the meditation, the heedfulness, the mindfulness, that the one has been mind, so that you can see your mental intention clearly. When they arise, you remind yourself, this is my mind. Is this what I want? If I allow this to manifest, I become heedless. Then my father was one thing is called suffering local law. How can I allow this to happen? It will contribute to my negative karma. And this is the one that will haunt me because I am born of it. Heavily conditioned and supported by it. And my life depends on it. I am what I am. Every moment, every instant because of this karma. That's why I have to have this wisdom, understanding of what this nature's law is all about. So that I can actually understand it clearly, then determine to take care of my calm. Then train my mind to be aware, to avoid all evil, to good. Then I learn to purify my mind, to develop the enlightenment, the wisdom that will enable me to be the noble one. So ultimately, you still need to develop a cultivation of the noble diploma, which is the meditation that will lead to all the wisdom and the enlightenment that can allow you to free your mind. So now we have already resolved first, second, third, and fourth precept. The fifth one is also the same. You see. The fifth one is the Buddha say we undertake the training room to abstain from taking one. Huh? Taking one. Intoxicant. Huh? Drugs. And all those things that can make our consciousness low. Uh, that can actually make us heedless. So once you have this kind of thing, you become heedless. Then you are very vulnerable. Then you can violate all the first four precepts because of this fifth precept you never get. So you see the danger of the fifth precept. Huh? A lot of people say, ah, yeah. Lord Buddha say, meet the path, drink a little bit, okay. Ah. So this is how they justify. Meet the way, no need to force yourself to treat everything. But then, is the one, your choice. Uh, but don't get the Buddha wrong. Uh. If your mind just put a little bit of the what they call medicinal wine to make the chicken, don't go and argue with her. Uh, please, that is not taking the real intoxicant. Uh, the intoxicant are those who are addicted to liquor. Uh, it's not for health reason. Uh, you take because you just want to drown your sorrow. You know what they drown your sorrow? Huh? They have this song. <laughs> I always use this analogy. Huh? You remember during the olden days, my time, the 60s.